In today's episode, we're diving into the latest developments at Starbase, where Starship's fifth integrated flight test is almost ready to launch. Discover how Ship 30 aced its final pre-launch test after a major engine replacement, and explore the groundbreaking features of the Raptor V3 engine, which was tested for the first time lately. We'll also highlight the swift progress on the new launch tower and phase two of the booster catch practice test. Plus, get the scoop on crucial Raptor simulation tests at McGregor for the Flight 5 booster catch attempt. SpaceX's fifth integrated flight test is on the horizon. Ship 30, the Starship upper stage designated for this mission, underwent significant upgrades in the past month. Apart from heat tile upgrades on the windward side of the ship, teams added new and stronger heat tiles to flap areas that sustained significant damage during Flight 4. Additionally, engineers addressed the hinge gap issues to prevent flap failure during the re-entry phase of Flight 5. Following these upgrades and modifications, Ship 30 was moved into Mega Bay 2 on August 3. Subsequently, a Raptor vacuum engine was removed from the ship and replaced with a brand new one. This engine replacement likely resulted from issues identified during the static fire test on July 26. After completing the engine installation, Ship 30 was placed on the static fire test stand and moved to the Massey's site for testing to validate the new engine's performance. On Wednesday evening, the vehicle underwent a spin prime test, during which a small amount of propellant was channeled through the engine's turbo pumps to verify the plumbing and ensure proper engine spin up. Unlike the typical procedure, SpaceX did not proceed with a static fire test after the spin prime. Instead, they determined that the engine was flight ready and returned Ship 30 to the production site to continue launch preparations. Meanwhile, Super Heavy Booster 12 continues its preparation inside Mega Bay for the full stack wet dress rehearsal and subsequent flight test. The wet dress rehearsal is tentatively scheduled for the last week of August, with Flight 5 anticipated in the first week of September. However, the actual launch date depends on the issuance of the FAA license. On Thursday, SpaceX announced via X that the launch vehicles are ready for Flight 5, pending FAA approval. They also mentioned that, in the interim, additional booster catch testing and Flight 6 vehicle testing will be conducted to ensure readiness. Currently, there is no update on the licensing process, which is delayed as the FAA thoroughly reviews the booster catch plan before granting authorization. Over the past two weeks, SpaceX teams have been diligently working on the tower arms, implementing upgrades and repairs to ensure a successful booster catch. They replaced many dampeners on the landing rail with enhanced versions to improve system reliability and made other significant upgrades. After completing the work on the tower arms, on early Wednesday morning, SpaceX rolled out the B-14.1 test tank from the production site to the launch site. This is the same test tank that was used for the catch tests in June. During that test campaign, B-14.1 was subjected to several controlled impact tests with the tower's left arm to gather valuable data on how the arm's force affects the booster's structure during a rapid mid-air capture. After the impact tests, teams conducted compression tests, which involved pressing the left arm against a booster catch point and simulating the stresses that the arm, landing rail, and dampeners would experience during a booster catch attempt. The recent upgrades to the tower arms and dampener replacements must have been derived from the test data gathered during the B-14.1 tests in June. After its return to the launch site this past week, the test tank was moved towards the launch pad and subsequently lifted and placed at the launch mount with the help of a crane. The test article was then prepared for phase two of the booster catch simulation tests. As SpaceX mentioned in their post on X, additional booster catching tests will be conducted in the coming days. Along with tests at Starbase, recent activities at SpaceX's McGregor test facility in Texas hint at crucial preparations for the Flight 5 booster catch attempt. NASA Spaceflight reports that one of the latest engine tests conducted at McGregor involved simulating the Super Heavy Booster's re-entry and landing burn scenario. This test, carried out last week, featured a real-light sequence with a precise 3-minute and 13-second gap, mirroring the interval observed in Booster 11's center engines from the boost back shutdown to the landing burn during Flight 4. The 3-minute and 13-second gap indicates a finely tuned procedure to ensure that the engines can reliably restart after the boost back phase. This specific test profile strongly indicates that SpaceX is not only validating the engine performance, but also ensuring the timing and reliability of the relight and landing procedures, essential for the precise landing of the booster on the launch tower arms. Last week, SpaceX unveiled the very first Raptor V3 engine, which marks significant advancements in thrust, specific impulse, and mass efficiency compared to its predecessors, the Raptor V1 and V2 engines. 
The V3 engine incorporates a range of cutting-edge technologies that streamline its design, enhance its performance, and simplify its operational requirements. These figures show that Raptor 3 boasts impressive performance statistics and notable mass reduction, a significant improvement over the previous versions. The engine is approximately 7% lighter and delivers a 22% increase in thrust compared to the Raptor 2, and is approximately 27% lighter and delivers a 51% increase in thrust compared to the Raptor 1. This enhancement in thrust is coupled with a return to the higher specific impulse of 350 seconds seen in the Raptor 1, indicating improved fuel efficiency at sea level. A revolutionary aspect of the Raptor 3 is its complete elimination of heat shields and fire suppression systems. The engine now uses regenerative cooling for all exposed components, significantly simplifying the engine's structure and reducing its overall mass. This reduction in mass has been achieved through the extensive use of additive manufacturing technique, which integrates many formerly discrete components into a single unit. SpaceX is not stopping with the current iteration of the Raptor 3. Future versions are expected to exceed 300 tons of thrust, with a thrust-to-mass ratio greater than 200. This would enable a liftoff thrust of 10,000 tons and a specific impulse of 380 seconds in the vacuum. Overall, the Raptor V3 represents a monumental advancement in rocket engine technology, pushing the boundaries of current capabilities and highlighting the exceptional innovation and expertise of the SpaceX engineering team. The first ever test of the Raptor V3 engine took place on Thursday afternoon at the McGregor test site. This groundbreaking test, conducted on a vertical stand, lasted approximately 30 seconds, marking a significant milestone in SpaceX's engine development. Additional testing of the Raptor V3 is expected in the coming days and weeks to further refine and validate its performance. Turning to the latest developments at Starbase, significant progress is being made on the construction of the second launch tower. On the morning of August 3, the sixth section of the tower was successfully lifted and stacked on top of the fifth section. The following day, the crane used for the tower stacking operations was taken down to undergo reconfiguration for the lifting of the remaining sections. Efforts are currently underway to extend the crane's boom to ensure it has the necessary reach to stack the final three sections of the tower. These sections are being prepared at the Sanchez site and will be transported to the launch site once the crane is fully operational. Additionally, the tower arms and carriage are also being readied at the Sanchez site. However, there have been no recent updates regarding the status of the Starship Quick Disconnect arm. The Pad 2 flame trench construction is also progressing swiftly in parallel to the tower construction. Interlocking sheet piles are currently being driven into the soil to form a wall for constructing the trench. This render provided by the space engineer offers a visual representation of the flame trench's location and its possible design. At the build site, teams have begun removing the heat tiles from Ship 31 inside the high bay. Ship 31 will soon receive the new stronger tiles, featuring a secondary ablative material underneath, similar to those installed on Ship 30. Once the tile replacement is complete, Ship 31 will be ready for static fire testing. Inside Megabate 2, progress is being made on the assembly of Starship 33, the first Starship Block 2 prototype. The common dome of the ship was moved into the bay last Sunday night and was subsequently joined with the already assembled sections. On Thursday morning, the liquid oxygen tank section was moved into the building and stacked later in the day. Ship 33 will be complete with the stacking of the final aft section. Following this, the installation of aft flaps, engines, plumbing, wiring, and other essential systems, including avionics and hydraulics, will commence. Meanwhile, the stacking of the methane tank for Booster 15 is progressing inside the Mega Bay. Ring sections have been observed being brought into the facility one by one for sequential assembly. Once the stacking is completed, the methane tank will be placed atop the already completed oxygen tank to finalize the Booster 15 assembly. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA officials announced on Wednesday that Boeing's Starliner spacecraft might not be safe enough to return astronauts from the ISS, prompting a potential reliance on SpaceX for a delayed return. NASA's Starliner crewed flight test mission, carrying astronauts Barry Wilmore and Suni Williams, launched on June 5, encountered significant issues during its journey to the ISS. The spacecraft experienced thruster malfunctions and helium leaks in its propulsion system, resulting in the shutdown of five out of its 28 reaction control thrusters. While four of these thrusters were later restored, one remains offline. Despite these challenges, Starliner successfully docked with the ISS on June 6, allowing Wilmore and Williams to join the existing crew. However, the spacecraft issues have delayed the astronauts' return, which was initially planned for June 14. Since the anomaly, Boeing and NASA have been working to address the issues.
They conducted thruster test firings on the ground and on the Starliner docked at the ISS to replicate the failure, identify its cause, and implement fixes. These tests revealed a bulging Teflon seal in an oxidizer valve, potentially restricting nitrogen tetroxide flow to the thrusters. Engineers are now assessing if the seal can endure the stresses of undocking and the deorbit burn. Most recent developments, including a NASA press conference on August 7, revealed potential plans for the astronauts' return. If NASA engineers gain confidence in the thruster performance, Wilmore and Williams could still return on Starliner later this month or in early September. Alternatively, NASA might launch the SpaceX Crew-9 mission with two astronauts instead of four, allowing Wilmore and Williams to stay on the space station and return to Earth in February 2025 on board the Dragon spacecraft. We haven't uh, made a decision yet relative to return uh, Butch and Sonny on Starliner or on Dragon on Crew-9. We have been working with SpaceX to ensure uh, that they're ready to respond uh, on Crew-9 for a contingency of returning uh, Butch and Sonny on Crew-9 if we need that. Now, we haven't approved this, this plan. In other words, we've done all the work to, to make sure this plan is there. We have the suits identified to fly up on Crew-9. We have the seats set up so that we can fly a multiple complement of people but we have not uh, turned that on formally as that's the path that we're going to go down. In light of these considerations, NASA has already delayed the Crew-9 launch from mid-August to September 24 to allow further analysis of the Starliner issues and to finalize return plans. While Boeing remains confident in Starliner's capabilities, some NASA officials prefer using Crew Dragon as a safer alternative. A final decision will be made by mid-August. NASA and SpaceX successfully launched the Northrop Grumman Cygnus cargo spacecraft, designated NG-21, aboard a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida on Sunday, August 4. The mission's primary objective was to deliver 3,857 kilograms of scientific equipment, research experiments, crew supplies, and hardware to the International Space Station. Cygnus separated from the rocket's upper stage around 14 minutes and 40 seconds after liftoff and began its journey towards the space station. This launch was particularly notable as it was the second of three planned Cygnus resupply missions using the Falcon 9 rocket, following the retirement of Northrop Grumman's Antares 230-plus rocket. Since 2013, Northrop Grumman has been using its Antares family of rockets for Cygnus launches, except for just three missions that used a United Launch Alliance Atlas V. However, the company retired Antares 230-plus last year, and its successor, Antares 330, will not be ready until mid-2025. Consequently, Northrop procured three Falcon 9 launches for Cygnus, the first of which was launched in January this year. During its journey to the ISS, Cygnus NG-21 faced an engine issue because of a low initial pressure state and missed its first altitude correction burn. Despite this complication, the solar arrays deployed successfully and engineers worked on a new trajectory plan to ensure the mission remained on track. Eventually, after a two-day and seven-hour journey, the Cygnus spacecraft arrived at the ISS on Tuesday, August 6. NASA astronaut Matthew Dominic captured it using the station's robotic arm, with astronaut Jeanette Epps acting as backup. The spacecraft was then installed on the Unity module's Earth-facing port, where it will remain for the next six months. During this period, the ISS crew will open the spacecraft hatch and offload the cargo inside. At the end of its mission in January, Cygnus will be filled with trash and other debris before departing from the station to burn up in the Earth's atmosphere upon re-entry. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.